The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. In our previous Dreamcast episode, we built the Dreamcast into a modular unit. Then we made the battery pack work and also figured out the basic form factor for how we were going to build the portable Dreamcast. In today's episode, the finale, we're going to design a custom case around that, wire it all together and make it into a cool portable. Let's get started. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. This is the layout that I think will work for the Dreamcast. Unfortunately, I'm probably gonna have to split the controller. Ugh, so, uh, this side here, this fits up until this point where it will hit the disk drive. So I need to chop it probably right here. And then it's gonna be awfully close. If not intersecting, it should work. There's a clean line here where it's just ground, but there are a lot of connections on the back. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Yeah, so if it's chopped right here, this side should end before it hits the CD-ROM and then this side will tuck in right here. All right, you know what? I'm just gonna have to go for it. Ugh. Controller, it is a far nobler thing you do than you have ever done. It is a greater rest you go to than you have ever known. What book was that from? Ugh, look at all these connections I'm gonna have to redo. One, two, blah, 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 probably about 12 or 13. Too many, including this ground here, power, more ground. You know, I started doing a Dreamcast Portable many years ago, probably like 2005, 2006. And I never finished it for these reasons. It was just too disheartening. <sighs> this is a switching power supply that Felix redesigned and made into a shape that we knew would fit in the space we have. I'm gonna nestle it right here, just beside the CD drive and connect it to the motherboard. One thing I bring up a lot and really can't be stressed enough is always take the thickness and shape and bundling of your wires into account when you design something. You know, if you just place your components inside something willy nilly, that's fine. But you know, how the components connect together is very important. And that's usually with wires, especially with something like this. So these wires right here, for instance, I had to make sure are clear of the heat sinks so I can bring them over here. So yes, always leave ample room for wire wrangling. The main connections for audio video we need off of the Dreamcast are ground, left, right, RGB, and composite sync. So I've got them wired up here with these thin cables off of the original plug. I'm gonna take these cables and bring them over to this jack and that's actually how the screen will connect. So the screen's gonna be on a lid that opens to give access to the disc. And there'll be a cable coming down here and when you put the unit together, you'll plug that cable into this one through a hole. So we need to make it, you know, as small as possible, but also something you can take apart. I bet people get really sick of me saying that. So I'm gonna bring these up a little bit. I'm just gonna have to assume I did it right. <laughs> Here comes the hot glue. I'm putting down hot glue because I want to protect the topper pads on the PCB. So the hot glue puts the strain on the wires, not the pads. So if the wires get pulled, the glue will hold it in place. The pads will be protected. Because if you rip up a pad, you can really mess things up on your board. Okay, once that hot glue sets, I'm gonna bring these wires over here and attach them to the plug. I'm going to design a case around the motherboard and CD-ROM drive. Those are gonna be the thickest parts of the unit, so I'm gonna start there. I think we can do this with about four layers of half-inch material, which will make the whole thing about two inches thick. So our first two layers will contain the motherboard, heat sink, and the batteries. So I'm gonna design this with a top-down view for routing, and also a side view so I can tell what the depths are. I have layers for all the objects, including the CD-ROM drive, 
and the heat sink and the motherboard down here. I'm also gonna make sure there's a plate of copper at the back of this for the two uh, diodes that had heat sinks on them in the original unit. So everything is designed with the CD-ROM in the center. So even though the CD-ROM isn't centered on the motherboard, the case will be centered around the CD-ROM. And that gives us some challenges, but we'll be able to do it. And another layer, which is layer two, this will have the actual wider shape of the unit. And we make as much of it thin as possible to make the overall look thinner. It's kind of like an illusion. But it also gives us a place to put the analog triggers, which would be right here, because we want those to be kind of, you know, indented. So that's actually where you'll be grabbing the unit when you're holding it. Then we have another layer, which we call layer one. Now you can see like the whole thickness of the unit right here. We don't have everything turned on, but so layer one is the front surface. There'll be a engraving plastic plate and right under that will be the CD-ROM. And then there'll be a spacer right here, which separates the CD-ROM itself from the rest of the unit and keeps it fairly enclosed. So when you open it up and remove the disc, you don't see a bunch of wires and other rigmarole laying around. We also have an LCD, which will sit on top of that. We're gonna use the PS1 screen. And the controls, the controls are gonna be a little tricky because in order to do this landscape format, we have to actually split the controller in half. And with all those analog sensors, that's gonna be a bit of a pain, but I think we can do it. So this is a overhead view of pretty much everything that's in the unit, including a uh, spring latch to allow the lid to open. We're gonna route these parts one at a time and then assemble the case. There will also be some 3D printed parts along the way. We'll install those as we go. I've drilled 16th inch pilot holes in the material and I'm gonna use a larger bit to clean out the major shapes. And I'm making the bottom layer and the layer just above it to start. Here are the first pieces of the case. So aluminum heatsink goes there. Then the Dreamcast sits on top of it like this. There's a countersink so the components fit. And then there's screw posts for the Dreamcast, a power switch, and the power modules up here. Then these walls I made in two different pieces to save plastic. I'll go like this and this. Once I know that it's all gonna fit together, then I'll glue it. I'm just checking first. All right, I'm convinced. Time to glue it together. All right, I've made layers four and layers three. Now it's time to cut layer two, which will actually attach to layer three. So two, three, four will be the back of the unit and layer one will be the front of the unit. Let's get started. I'm building the case using half inch white Sintra, which is a material I really love. So this is layer four, three, and this will be layer two. So the idea here is this sets onto the first two layers. And uh, the idea is I still wanna be able to install everything into it because I always build things you can take apart. This hole here is for the fan to exhale air. And then we have uh, vent holes here. So the idea is I want the air to come in this side and then be blown out this side. So the, the air will kind of travel over all the components. I made holes for the analog triggers and I have these 3D printed covers for them. Let's see how this fits. Trigger goes right there. And they're still attached to the uh, circuit board so that I have to put them on in relation to where the circuit board's gonna go. There we go. Here's the front piece. We finally got the design far enough along that I was able to laser it. And I can start building things into it, finally. I'm gonna start with the riser for the CD-ROM drive. It's a little bit below the surface, so it's gonna have a spacer and this plate. I'm using some springs to open the lid that have these little spring cups here that have a hole through them to keep the spring in place. So these will press up against the holes in the plastic and I've drawn in the spring's maximum compression, which makes it about 0.2 inches high. And there'll be a matching spring cup in the uh, screen lid. There'll be a layer between them. This represents where the screen will be. So when the lid is closed, they'll compress flat like that. But when we flip the latch, this should pop it open. So there'll be one on either side and then there'll be receiving uh, cups on the other side. 
The latch I've started on here. It also has a spring, same size spring because why not? I already had it drawn. Well, anyway, this goes down here and there'll be a tooth that comes in from the top lid and that will click against this and this spring will push against it. So to release the lid, you'll pull down on this little lever right here and it should pop open. I have more parts routed now. This is the layer one frame. That's going to attach to this layer and we'll also attach the latch for the lid. So these things kind of all get attached together. So I'm gonna actually attach the screen portion next. I'm not gonna enclose it until I know everything works. There's holes in it to receive the springs, like that. And there's hinges in the back. And I guess we'll see how far it opens. So these are the hinges that I came up with. Uh, one half goes to the bottom and one half goes to the top. So what I'm gonna do is this will glue in place here. And there's obviously gonna be a, a lid on this. Uh, I wanna get some support back here using my cross beam, but I don't wanna do that until I get the hinges in place. Cause if there's some inaccuracy, I wanna be able to manually trim it. So this pops up quickly, but you have to keep in mind once it has some weight in it, it won't pop up as fast. See, I was worried this thing would be like, Woo! but it didn't happen. That would have been cool, sort of. I 3D printed a bridge structure and put a plate onto it. I'm gonna use this to hold the batteries. So I'm going to screw the bridge structure together and then tape the batteries to it. That'd be tape and glue. I don't want the batteries to, uh, touch anything, that would be bad. But I also want it to be removable. So this bridge and the batteries will be one unit and the screw posts on the side are what will install it into the uh, main case. Let's see. Some hot glue so it knows where to be. And these bridges here, have two purposes. One is they allow the air to come through the air holes at the bottom. Also, they give us a place to wrap tape. We need to wire the battery to the charge jack. So I'm gonna check the continuity. The charge jack has a disconnect on it, so when it's unplugged, two of these leads won't be connected, which are these two right here. So see how they have a connection? And when I plug it in, they don't. And that's a great way for us to disconnect power from the main circuit when the batteries are being charged. So I'm gonna wire the batteries to the charge jack and then the charge jack to the main power circuit. We're gonna use this 10 energy charger to do the charging so we don't have to do a charging circuit. One less thing to build. Let's double check our connections. Here's gonna be our ground and these two pins will be our power. So this one doesn't have power, so it's been disconnected, and this one does have power. So when we plug in the battery charger, we want the power to go from the battery charger to the battery. But when the charger's unplugged, we want the power to flow through to our Dreamcast circuit. So this pin goes to the battery, this pin goes to the Dreamcast circuit. Now I will wire that, because I am the king of snakes. to add the fan next. I ported out the three wires that drive the fan. I'm going to snake them over, making sure I don't hit anything in the battery because the battery is now technically live and they're powerful. So the fan control is gonna come over here and the fan will exhaust here. So hopefully the air comes in this way and goes out that way, in theory. Here is the disc open switch. I'm gonna mount this somewhere around here and then I'll manually cut a hole in the top portion so 
this will be pressed down when you close the lid. I need to measure the distance from the disc loader to the front lid, and then that will tell me where to position the switch. Okay, so it's 0.35 up. If I mount it flush, that should work. I'm gonna glue the speakers in place and then start wiring them up. Now the speakers hook up to the screen and the screen will be down here. So see how this is all kind of like one piece? So the speaker wires will come down here from the screen, going to the speakers, and then we'll have a plug coming from the screen that will plug into the bottom of the unit. So this is one half of the unit and the bottom with the Dreamcast and everything is the other half. So it's all about making it modular. I have this printout, which might have come from my own, it did come from my own website. Look, benheck.com. It's like someone walking over your internet grave. It has the pinouts that we need for the Sony PS1 screen. Red, green, blue in, composite sync, power ground, and then audio out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the wires through these holes here underneath the screen. So this will be all one unit. I'm gonna wire the speakers. I color coded them, left and right, blue and red, Republicans and Democrats. That's how I remember. You know, plenty of room, hopefully. But I still have to connect the split controller halves. So saying plenty of room could be like famous last words. The unit goes together like this. This folds down here, so we need to attach. Now looking at it now, I guess we really didn't need plugs, because this, this attaches here and that probably wouldn't be that difficult to do. Um, this is meant to go to this plug here, and that's got the audio and the video. So I'll basically make this as short as it can be, so it doesn't take up any more room than it has to. I'm gonna attach headers to this, and then we can solder the sides together. I've hot glued the memory card to the controller board and now I'm going to hand wire it to where the original connectors were. There's just no room for the VMU. I'm connecting the VMU directly to the controller via 14 connection wires. I want this to be basically one solid unit so it's a lot easier to put inside the case. Now for the really unfun part, wiring the split controller back together. I also have buttons to insert, the four colors. So I basically have to go from all of these fine connections here, down, over, up, and to this board. Splitting the controller in half broke 16 total connections. Power and ground are pretty easy, but the other 14, not so much so. I have to very carefully wire to traces that I scrape off one at a time on the motherboard. And I can only do it in certain places because I don't want them to be too close together, otherwise it would short circuit. I solder one side and then the other, making sure there's enough room for everything else inside the case as well, such as batteries and the CD-ROM drive. I wanna make sure that when I put this together, it doesn't break any wires. I have everything wired up and ready to go. Let's do a brief overview before we put it together. Batteries, CD-ROM drive, Dreamcast, power driver board, fan, heat sinks, the controller split into two, which took quite a long time to do, Ugh. internal memory card, and finally up here, the screen. Time to close it up. Put this here, bring this up, plug in the controller. The main connection between the two halves is power for the screen controller, and audio video. We're using RGB for that. Now I'm gonna flip it over and put in some screws. I'm gonna glue the faceplate in place. I guess the Dreamcast is finally done. Time to cast some dreams. Oh, look, you can skip the opening animation. That's pretty cool. I use the original fan from the Dreamcast. That thing really cooks along. Interesting, you can skip the Digital Eclipse logo, but not the Infograms logo. Conspiracy. Where are my dragons? Oh.
Oh, sweet Pong. Yes. <laughs> so I have to fight the computer or what? I do. God, the computer sucks. The goal of this project was to turn a Sega Dreamcast video game console into a portable version, complete with display and controls. In the end, we got everything to fit within a reasonably small form factor, so we met our challenge goals. I am fairly pleased with this outcome, however, it was a lot more work than I anticipated. The main thing I would have done differently is to schedule myself more time to complete the project. What would you have done differently for this build? Have you ever modded a video game console before? Let us know on the Element 14 community, where you can also keep track of our upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. Possums need to be cool. They need to be hip. <laughs> Here's a litmus test, awesome possum. If you have to tell someone you're cool, you're not. <laughs> In the garbage. <laughs>